So I got done watching the Augie RFC versus Deaf Noodles debate, and my god, it was a shit show. After the first Deaf Noodles drama, I was already side-eyeing the guy for his out-of-left-field tweets, first making fun of a criticism video by posting it to his Twitter of almost 50k followers instead of ignoring it or taking it seriously. I believe it was Augie who pointed out that it was kind of a shady and passive-aggressive thing to do, inviting his audience to dislike bomb the guy at first. And then Deaf Noodles went batshit insane on this massive tangent about about like how other commentators criticizing him for the move are fascist flirters and bullies. Oh, but you know that he's actually Brazilian and he struggled to get into America. All this Tom fool fuckery in an effort to defend himself. It was through that that I learned of his persona, his comedian shtick. A concept that he says means that when he's deaf noodles, he is making parody tweets that are all jokes. His Twitter description is mixed between the soup and the Colbert report, a satirical take on internet news and commentary hosted by a cat in a Minecraft house. Now this would be all well and good if he actually kept to his character, but instead he just chooses when to be which, it feels like. At the start of the debate, Dennis, who is Deaf Noodles, says to Augie, so what do you think of Deaf Noodles? Do you like Deaf Noodles? Do you watch his videos? And it's just so cringe. I'm getting strong roleplay vibes from my younger days and it kills me inside. If your argument is that you're like Stephen Colbert, you watch him get on stage and he's doing a monologue, he's spouting off real news and making funny jokes to accompany them or exaggerating, in that way I can see being Deaf Noodles' YouTube channel quite similar in regards to internet drama compared to that. However, what he fails to realize is that this format does not work on Twitter. Tweets are a far cry from a video where you can make telling expressions and you can add sarcasm to your tone. If you're just typing words, there's no way you can say it's all just jokes without blatantly explaining your jokes in text format because there's nothing else to clue you in. One look at his Twitter would confuse anyone if I'm honest. You scroll down and you see him break real stories every day. He brings attention to new things and I know people who use his page to catch up on internet drama like the COVID parties or whatever the hell's happening with Nikocado Avocado. For example, if you read this tweet that I'm putting up on the screen, is your first thought, <laughs> oh man, that's a hilarious joke. Or is it, huh, I guess Trump got banned by YouTube. I guarantee you it's the latter because you're learning something, not being entertained. This is a real thing that happened. It's not just made up. Just because you say, who could have seen that coming? Doesn't make it a joke. It still makes it an informative tweet and that is the point of it. Now, if you had said that in a YouTube video, people would see that actually as more like satire because you're making it funny with your tone. You're rolling your eyes or something. You're you're adding extra quips to it. But the tweet in itself isn't funny. It's not a joke. Most of your tweets, deaf noodles, are not actually funny. They're generally informative and function to clue people in on internet happenings. Now with this in mind, I cannot fathom how he th still thinks that his Twitter is pure satire, just because he puts on the heading, breaking news that will most definitely change your life. That doesn't make it a joke. It just makes it a header for your tweet, attempting to be humorous. What follows after, whether it's talking about how fans reacted to Belle Delphine's porn video or how Jason Derulo was hacked on Twitter, is true and what actually happened, and that's the part that people are paying attention to. People do take your tweets seriously. I don't even think they pay that much attention to the joke in Caps Lock. That's something you need to come to terms with because you break real news. People source you all the time. So even if you say you're not a journalist, you still give lots of information and people rely on you for this reason. People believe what you say. Now with that in mind, look at the whole important 
Augie RFC, Bo Blacks, and Nicholas D'Orio are maliciously inciting their audience to create Parlor account under my name and write horribly racist things. I don't have Parlor. I have never had Parlor. You can access Parlor via web without account. This is a tweet that he put important on, which means it's apparently not a joke. Yet he goes on to say at the end of the thread that he's considering legal action. Now, in the debate with Augie, he said that the word important on a tweet is his safe word for real and not his apparently normal satire. Then why, Deaf Noodles? Why did you tell Augie that that last tweet of the thread about suing was just a joke? How can you go from, this is serious, at the start of a Twitter thread, and then making a statement like that and claiming, oh, well, the other two tweets before that, they were serious, but that last one, oh, oh, it was just a joke. Not only that, but people in the replies of that tweet said things like, do it, they're so childish, and you liked that tweet, and other tweets like it. And when Augie called you out on that, you really didn't have anything to say. You just hid behind the shield that your audience apparently knows you so well, they just ran along with a joke. They all have the same sense of humor as you, apparently. They can tell whenever you are or are not making a joke. And that's what truly baffles me, because this person is a fan. They retweet your videos, they post about you. It's stupid if you expect me or anyone else to believe that every fan of yours who read that Twitter thread understood that the first two tweets of the three-part thread were serious but the last one was just a joke. In my head, this is all too convenient. And your inconsistency exhausts the rest of us because it's obvious you're just picking and choosing when to make jokes and when to be serious whenever it's best for you. You did it in this case and you have done it in countless others. And there's so many inconsistencies on your Twitter. What infuriates me the most out of this entire ordeal is how you purposefully and intentionally wove a narrative that all three of these friends, Augie RFC, Bo Blacks, and Nicholas DiOrio, they were all in on that little scheme to create a parlor account. Oh, they all intended to tell people to make fake tweets. Augie called you out on the disingenuous nature of your tweet and how you conveniently clipped out the section where Nick disavowed the idea. What Deaf Noodles did there is the equivalent of what the news did to Fred in the Scooby-Doo 2 movie. Hey, you're doing that thing again where you take everything I see out of context. You're trying to make it look like I think Coolsville sucks. No, don't record that. All Fred Jones had to say was, I think Coolsville sucks. In light of the city's recent chaos. Nick made a Twitter video about it. Let's take a quick look. I'm watching this fucking interview he did with Augie, which thank God he released early. Fuck your views, piece of shit. That's fine. That's great that he disavowed it, but he never, he never told this chat to not do it. Now he's clipped this twice. The first time he clips it, he clips this far. Uh, somebody make a Deaf Noodles app, tweet horrible shit on there, then post some replies to his tweet and see if he's re retarded. You can't do it. The website's it. down. You gotta get a gap. No, I have it. I have it open right now. Okay. All right. Somebody make a horrible account of Deaf Noodles. Yeah, so I can screenshot and reply to him. <laughs> he clips like the first 20 seconds or whatever where I don't say shit and he posts this to his Twitter saying that I'm out to harass him, okay? Then when he gets called out for that, he plays this clip. <laughs> and be like, this you. Say this you and see how many people believe it, dude. Yeah, let's I'm gonna do pass it. on that one. I don't want to be involved. Yeah, so then good. I say I'm gonna disavow and I don't want to be involved, right? And that's not good enough for Dennis because Dennis wants this. That's great that he disavowed it. But he never, he never told this chat to not do it. So now he's clipped me twice incorrectly. Now play a couple more seconds. Ah, uh, shut the fuck up, dude. You know it's funny. Nick, you're a grown Yeah, yeah I'm getting yikes at, but it's funny. Yikes. All right. All right. Yeah. Close. Yeah, dude. Hey, next time Death Noodle streams, spam it out BLM. See how no. fast he can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, spam his channel chat, BLM. No. See how None of that shit. Is. There's nothing wrong yeah. with BLM. Whoa. I just said chat, no, none of that shit. That is me quite literally telling my chat 
No, none of that shit. I'm caught in a very awkward fucking position because people in the call are doing things that I don't agree with. And do you know what happens when people in the call are doing things that I don't agree with? I say this, dude. It's like literally a minute later into the clip. Look at this tweet I just found. Dude, I'm 100% not down for this. Like, I'm telling you that I don't want to be involved. And I guarantee fucking tea my name is going to be on the tweet. I guarantee fucking tea me sitting here telling you I do not want to be involved and I don't think this dude, is Dude, that fair. literally happened. I'm, dude, that... What are you talking Nick. about, Nick? Look at that real tweet. No, I just sent you. no, you're it. so you right, you. Nick. You're so right. I, it doesn't like, even matter what I say. He's gonna fucking name me. No. Anything. Go fuck yourself. Delete your account. Piece of shit. What you did to Nick was gross. You 100% ignored the logic in the debate and how you think just because it's Nick's stream, it's his fault that Augie wanted to troll you in a very obvious and stupid way on a shutting down website. Nick did tell his chat not to do anything, and if you'd watched a little bit more, you would have known that. But that doesn't fit Deaf Noodles' narrative because he's publicly denounced the whole Augie group of pals. It's just unreal to me that Nick actually predicted you would name him in this. That's like saying when Keemstar has a child predator or something on drama alert, if, if that predator says something bad or hurtful, Keemstar has to take full responsibility for everything the guy says and how it might impact or trigger his audience. That's just not realistic because otherwise he would never have any controversial figures on his platform. While I was recording this, I saw Deaf Noodles actually apologize for not realizing that Nick Diorio actually told his audience not to do what Augie encouraged. But come on, man, you should have looked into that before making such a defaming tweet and arguing it on a live stream. Why didn't you just watch a little bit further on for full context, Mr. I have all the news man? But then again, he's the joke man too. It means, oh, uh, he's the joke man in this case. It was all just a joke, guys, a joke. It was just extremely frustrating to watch how when he fucks up or says something dumb, he can hide it with, I'm a satire channel, see disclaimer. But in the same breath, he brings up news and he actively informs people on a daily basis. People trust him as a source of knowing what's going on around the internet. People take him seriously and he wants to play it both ways where he's the advantage of others turning to him to learn things. But also if he says something dumb, or shady, he can just invoke the joke card. And it would be totally different if he just did those those dumb Twitter videos like Keem started where we can actually see your nonverbal communication in action. But just typing a bunch of words and then calling it a joke, no one can see the joke. It's just a bunch of words, okay? A few limited characters. You can't really pull it off, so stop trying. This is a real-time example of him showing how he can backtrack with ease, with the shield of comedy and his character. Because his character is the one saying these crazy exaggerating things. People don't get it sometimes, and when they call him out, it's either something he stands by, and if it, uh, if it is, then he'll say, well, as good comedians say, great comedy comes from the truth. The point still stands that Augie says fascist stuff, and I was in my character just making it a little bit more crazy than usual. Or, if he says something completely wrong, he can jump to saying, Oh no, I didn't mean to say I'll take legal action. It was just my wacky character, Deaf Noodles, making things up. That old rascal. He literally spelled it out that he can have it both ways if he wants to. He can say something and if it goes over well or if he believes it, oh, you know, it was his, his character with the truth and comedy. But if it was just a bad take, then he could be like, oh no, it's just, you know, my character, he says crazy things sometimes. He just, he can have it either any way he wants with this excuse. Another example of that was earlier in the debate, Deaf Noodles was like, oh no, 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 I liked the kid who made the criticism video on me. Deaf Noodles was just clowning on him non-seriously when he chose to make fun of him. But in a different tweet, he's like, oh no, Deaf Noodles said you guys were dogpiling on people and kind of bad, but you know, actually there's some truth to it when he chose to make fun of you right there. You're telling me that one of these Deaf Noodles tweets meant the exact opposite of what you think, but the other Deaf Noodles tweet was mostly correct? Dude. Dude. You're just cherry picking and 
And your tweets can mean whatever you say they mean. They can only apparently be interpreted by you correctly. And another thing I found so irritating about this debate was the fact that Death Noodles nonstop defended his jokes. Whenever it said that it's a bad joke or not a joke at all, he's like, no, it is a joke. My audience gets it. And yet, whenever anyone else makes a stupid shitty joke, he, he, he asks, but what's the punchline? That's not funny. It just felt like he made himself out to be the gatekeeper of jokes. The arbiter of what's funny and what's not. Why can, why can he make all these jokes, but then other people can't? It's ridiculous to me that a comedian would constantly question other people's jokes in the debate when comedy is subjective and everybody knows it. And when people like Augie don't understand his jokes and like call him out and ask him about it, he's like, oh no, this is a joke. But then this other thing, it's not a joke. Oh, but it's all under the same Twitter account, but oh, jokes, jokes, jokes. It's just, it felt so much holier than thou and exhausted me to the bone because he, he would just seem to make the rules and determine what could be protected under the umbrella, the umbrella of just clowning and jokes when his own aren't even all that funny in the first place. Disclaimer, that's just my opinion. Subjectivity, remember? Deaf noodles, dude. I, I like your YouTube content, generally speaking. That's the place where your format works. That's where it's so easy to tell when you're joking because nonverbal communication is a huge part of being a comedian. And everyone can get all of that from just watching a video of you. What isn't working is your stupid Twitter account where you're basically like CNN Twitter, except you add a stupid extra sentence at the top that's supposed to indicate you're making fun of whatever you're talking about. That's literally the only difference. I think it's only fair people call you out on that bullshit. And I think Augie makes the point of you perhaps having a separate Twitter for the serious tweets. And that could be a good idea because God damn it, man, this is YouTube. It's a platform built on normal people being their genuine selves. It's what separates us from the Colbert Report and all that mainstream bullshit. If you want to be one of them, go out and get that job and try to be like Lily Singh. Cause I bet you'd actually be better at that than her and clearly it's your passion. I believe in you, but what's not gonna work for people is this weird game of trying to figure out which one of your tweets are jokes and which ones aren't because you're not in mid monologue with a laugh track and, and a studio audience behind you or even using a sarcastic tone. You're making informative, limited character tweets that people in your community rely on and trust. So ditch your dumb format and find a different way to get your point across to people. Cause people don't like you because you don't seem genuine. And even some of your audience, I doubt they get all of your jokes anyway. Like, if you're going to make a call out post to YouTubers that have a smaller platform than you, still playing your little character, do you, do you laugh when they respond seriously to you? Are, are you upset they don't get your joke? I thought you weren't supposed to punch down in comedy, yet you still make a laughing stock out of things saying it's serious but not serious of you calling them fascists, then being mad they didn't get the joke like, oh wow, I can't believe Augie, Nick, and Boblex and them all, they're, they're taking my deaf noodles tweets so seriously when I defamed them on my larger platform, they clearly don't get the joke that sometimes it's completely serious and other times not at all serious, they need to learn about my roleplay character which is definitely not me in order to even interact with me otherwise I'll block them it makes me tired so tired like I'm sorry Dennis but people shouldn't have to learn about your character in order to respond to things that you say about them whenever you direct your audience at them and get them to attack people I I'm sorry that like that they need to understand the deaf noodles persona 
uh, you know, and, and you need to know what's a joke and what's not a joke. Watch my videos, understand the character, and, uh, and, uh, don't defend yourself, because it's just a character. It's not me. I didn't do anything. It's just Dev Noodles. Basically, cut this shit out. It's annoying for everyone that we have to go through all these hoops and whistles to even interact. It's just so irritating. Probably even worse for your audience watching you have to do all these mental gymnastics to get your point across of what you deem to be a funny way since, I, I like I said, I really don't think all of them get your jokes. Maybe sometimes they get the joke, but if you're like, oh, this YouTuber is bad and it was just a joke, there are going to be a good portion of them who legitimately think that you think this YouTuber is bad, so then they think that YouTuber is bad. But basically no one will want to interact with you if you they can't even trust the things you say because you're playing all these comedy role play games give it a rest take the criticism and if you like this video subscribe and comment i really want to get this channel off the ground and i i rushed to get this video out because i had a lot of thoughts on stuff and i was like i want to talk about this so thank you so much for watching